Howdy, welcome to my channel. Today we are participating in the Team Tiny Christmas in July hop. Remember to put the hashtag at the beginning so you can find all of the other channels participating in this hop. Our hop today is being sponsored by Joy Claire Designs. They gave each of the channels participating one of their Christmassy wintry stamp sets. The one that I chose to use is Joy Claire Designs Snowy Greetings. Also, from now until the 28th, if you use the code TEAMTINY20 in your shopping cart, when you shop at Joy Claire Designs, you get 20% off your purchase of any stamps, excluding stamps from the last call section. This code also does not apply to dies or stencils. It just applies to stamps. We're also going to be bringing in some Distress Oxide inks, our water bottle, a stencil, along with the Make Art Station. And for right now, we're going to place our mask over our image. Yes, I did just, I have previously used this mask, but it should fit perfectly well over this piece. Now we are bringing in the Make Art Station. I like to use this whenever I'm using a stencil. So we are gonna start out by brushing on Broken China using this makeup brush that I found on Amazon. I'll have the links in the description box below. So right now we are going in with the Broken China. Since we have previously used this mask, I'm starting from the edge of the mask and going outwards. That way the brush doesn't have an opportunity to move our mask that much. Okay. Now we're gonna come in with our faded jeans. We're gonna use the same makeup brush because all of our colors are blues and we're just going from lightest to darkest. Therefore, there shouldn't be that much contamination between the ink pads. Now we don't technically need to worry about the bottom of the snowman for this because we are going to come back in once our stenciling is done and use Liquid Applique by Marvy to create a snow background for the snowman to be sitting upon. If you can't find Liquid Applique, you can use Snow Marker, which is also by Marvy. They do pretty much the same thing. Now we're going to go in with the chipped sapphire. So now we're going to bring in a baby wipe to clean off our make art station. You don't have to use a baby wipe. You could just use a paper towel and some water. I just happened to have a baby wipe handy. We're gonna keep this off to the side in case we need to clean our station again. Now, 
we're going to bring the stencil out and we are going to apply it over the top of our card front. Then we're gonna put this magnetic ruler over our card base that doesn't get covered by the stencil. And we're going to bring in our magnets. Now we're just going to spritz with water And then we're going to bring in our kitchen towel. So why did we just do all of that? Okay, so we're going to re remove our stencil to show you what the result was of doing that. We activated the oxide in the inks, which turns them white but only in the areas that were sprayed by the water over the stencil. We're going to repeat that step over the next side of this card front. You could get a similar effect if you were to use a baby wipe. However, because our stencil is so finite and intricate, this won't work because I've already tried it and it did not have good results. If your stencil had wider spaces, you could definitely do the baby wipe technique with the stencil instead. So we're just trying to cover up this area that we're not placing our ruler over because it won't cover up enough space. Then do the spraying again. And again with our paper towel. So as you can see, we've got different types of snowflakes going on. And all we had to use was our spray bottle and our stencil. You could use any spray bottle or stencil it's just this is the one that I have that has snowflakes on it and I figured that snowflakes would go really well with the snow mint now we are done with the stencil and our make art station and we're also done with the brushes and the distress oxiding we're also done with the water bottle. Now, now what we're going to do is bring in our liquid applique, or if you don't have liquid applique, you can use snow marker. We are also bringing in this cutting board to give our piece somewhere to sit while we dry it a bit. We're going to dry it because once it's dry, we will be able to put the liquid applique at the bottom of this card where our snowmen are sitting. So now we are going to bring in our tweezers to help us remove our mask. Okay. Thought that would work, but you know what I know will work? Our tool in one. This is your first time to my channel. I use the tool in one quite a bit just because it's an awesome tool to have in the craft room. Now it's okay if your mask rips after you've done this technique because you can always make another mask. Now if you don't have a glue eraser, you can always use a gum eraser to help erase all this gluey masky part that gets left behind, which occasionally does happen when you use a mask, especially if 
you've done any wet techniques over it. Okay, I think that'll be fine. So, we could A, start out by coloring our snowman, or B, bring in our liquid applique and ground our snowman. I'm gonna go with B, but that's a choice. You just have to figure out which way you're gonna go. So, all you do with this is you squeeze it out and then you sort of try to scribble with your liquid applique. Now it doesn't look really cool right now, and I know that, but I promise when we're done, it'll look really cool. Now you don't have to use a cutting board if you have a mat that can take heat. But the mat that I work on does, is not able to take heat very well. This technique is also great if you are trying to ice a cupcake image or if you have a cloud and you would like that to look a little more puffy. Okay, so now the magic's gonna start <laughs> and it's gonna look so much better. We're going to bring in our heat tool again. And it poofs up the liquid applique, which causes a snowy effect. That's why this technique for doing, so yes, you can go over a piece you've done with li liquid applique with a little more, if there are any blank spots. Also, this technique of making the snow appear, this is also a great technique if you're trying to do a marshmallow, especially a toasted marshmallow, because you can actually burn the liquid applique if you apply too much heat to it. We're going to try to avoid that with this image though. There you go. Now that we're done creating this ground for our snowmen, we're going to color them using a blend of markers and pencils. And we're going to bring in some scratch paper. If you have something behind your cardstock that is dark, it could bleed through the front or, well, you're cardstock is going to bleed through the back either way but you don't want anything to bleed through the front which is why we are using a plain piece of printer paper so to start out we are going to use the light color of ice blue blend to help us form our snowman you could use gray but I feel like grays don't work as well when you're trying to make something cold because you want this to look cold since they're snowmen. As I said, we had two options. We could do the grounding of our snowmen before we started coloring or we could do it after. The downside to doing it before is that you kind of have to color upside down a bit, but this is about as much coloring as I prefer to do on a snowman. I'm trying to draw in lines that'll help it look more round. Now, we're going to bring in the medium portion of this tri marker to go alongside our middle snowman. Not on the inside of our middle snowman, but on the outside because we want it to look like a shadow. Okay. So now we're gonna go back in with the light and use it over the top portion of our snowman. Now, if you're not familiar with markers, a blender marker is sort of a misnomer. It's not exactly used for blending, 
what it's actually used for is erasing. So I don't know why they don't just call it an eraser marker, but they don't, they call it a blender marker. Now we're gonna bring in our colored pencils to color our little carrots. Now our carrots are gonna look a little yellowish, and these are Prisma Color Premier colored pencils, in case you're wondering. And we've also grabbed a cool gray. Now, why did we grab a gray if our snowmen are supposed to look frosty, which is why we used a blue? Well, we grabbed the gray because I want the little poofs on their caps to be colored in just a bit, not a lot, just enough. Um, and that, since it's not supposed to give the illusion of being cold, can be a gray. But if you're going for something to look colder, you need to use more of a blue, at least when you're talking about ice. So we're bringing in a couple of browns. I'm gonna try to color, give our carrots more of a shadow. I know it's a little hard to do considering that our carrots are so small, but we can still make the attempt. Now, now we're going to use our colored pencils to color in our tree branches, which are our snow people's arms. Now for that, I don't think we can really do much shading because this is far smaller. So we used Sienna Brown for our tree limbs. Now we're just going to color our snow people. We're going to give them some colorful clothing and nothing has to be matchy-matchy since typically I would assume children make snowmen. I'm saying assume because, well, I live in Texas. Specifically, I live in central Texas. It's only snowed a handful of times. And when we mean snow, it is definitely not the kind of snow that you would expect if you were to visit Colorado or Utah or Washington State or any of those kind of places. Um, the kind of snow we get, it's more like a drizzle of snow and it only lasts about a day at most. So speaking of snowmen, and since I do live in central Texas, um, okay, so here's a bottle of water. Uh, the tallest snowman I have ever made living here in Texas would be about that tall. That's about as tall a snowman as, like, from this label to the base. That's about as tall a snowman as I've ever made in my life living in Texas. So now we're gonna do this little snowman's hat. Now it's kind of a lighter color than our previous color, which was we used jade green. So what is y'all's favorite time of the year? Are you a winter person or a summer person? a fall person, or a spring person. Now, color-wise, as far as like what colors I like, I'm a jewel tone, so I would probably call that a winter person, as far as like the color of clothes I look good in, but as far as the weather I prefer, I am a spring-summer person as far as that stuff goes, absolutely. I know it looks really weird. It looks like they're wearing the same color as far as like this snowman versus this snow snowman versus that snowman. Like these two look like they're wearing the same color, but they're not, I promise. This is green turquoise and the other color is jade green, but they are really similar in color. I don't know, if I thought about it, I would have put this, I would have like, probably still left him in these colors, but possibly changed his sweater to this 
one and vice versa, you know. So I think our little snow people look kind of nice. I'm happy with how the sentiment looks too. Now, I chose to print my sentiment with my snow people, but you could print it differently. You could print your, your sentiment on a different piece of paper and prop that up onto your card. We're going to bring in our card base and then we're going to stick our card front onto our base. When I do that, I like to bring in a stamping platform. And because this piece got a little warped, we're going to use some tear tape to tape it onto the card base. And here's our Teflon bone folder. We're just going to use the Teflon bone folder to crease the fold line. We only crease it because I already pre-score it, so all that's left to do is set in that crease. And we're going to place our card base in our stamping platform. So now just bring in the tear tape to put it on the card front and then place that onto the card base. This tear tape is from wanttoscrap.com. I think I got it at a scrapbook convention. I miss those. Certainly not having any this year. Okay, so bring back our two-in-one. This part is to help you remove paper pieces from your die cuts. This part is your pokey tool. It also comes with, now I have a couple of these because I happen to love them so much. It also comes with a spatula. So if you were to just buy a tool in one, you get the pokey tool, the spatula, and the little roller bit. I also bought the add-on for this, which is a metal set of pieces that are for scoring. So you could use those for scoring as opposed to using a bone folder. Mostly because I was trying to find a different way to score so that when I scored, my paper didn't wind up with any shiny bits. Ooh, ooh, I poked in it. <laughs> okay, that's okay. So have y'all been watching any cool new TV shows or new movies? Do you have any to recommend? Um, so the genre we usually like, like me and my husband, we like action, we like sci-fi. So there's our card. Now if you wanted to, you could add some, actually you know what, we're going to add something. Let me go grab it. We're going to use this glimmer brush from close to my heart. It's very similar to this Wink of Stella brush. Although I do have to say this, it is much taller than the Wink of Stella. So we're just gonna add a bit of shimmer, which I don't often do, but I don't know, I'm feeling a bit whimsical as far as the snow people go. So we are going to bring in our brush and you use it the same way you use a Wink of Stella. We're only gonna add it to like the face and the bottom of the snow people. I don't think it really needs to be added to the clothing. So yeah, there you go. We've got our little snow people and they've got their little clothes and they've got some snowflakes going on and then they've got their little snow 
snowy bottom for the ground and then they've got a little bit of shimmer to the snow people as far as like the ice goes so I think that's good remember if you'd like to follow along the rest of this YouTube hop to use the hashtag team tiny Christmas in July if you want to go shopping at Joy Claire Designs you get 20% off when you use this code it only applies to stamps and only stamps that are not in the last call section so that code is team tiny 20 I hope you all stay happy stay healthy stay crafty hit that like button if you like what you saw click subscribe if you'd like to see more and if you have any questions or comments leave them in the comment section have a great day bye